Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon, and today I'm going to review and give away the Power Play Emerging Powers Pokemon theme deck. This is a fighting and water type deck, and like always, I'm going to give this away, and I do these deck giveaways on the first of every month. Well, last month I just gave away the booster packs, but all the other months I plan on, on the first of the month, giving away a theme deck. I had a little trouble last month just because... Emerging Powers came out August 31st, and I actually wasn't home around that time, so I had to review those at a later date. So, every first of the month, I'll be giving away a deck. This month, it is the Power Play theme deck. And in order to win this theme deck, you need to do the following things. You need to subscribe to my channel, Primetime Pokemon. You need to like and favorite this video. Follow me on my blog if you haven't done that already. So to follow me on my blog, just go to my blog, the link will be in the underbar below, and just click join site on the left hand side. You just need to be, you can sign up with a Twitter, uh, Twitter, Gmail, uh, a couple other accounts, Yahoo Mail, I think, anything's free, all of them are free like that, it's quite easy to do. So do all those things, once you've done all those things, basically comment in the comment section of this video, saying you've done all these things and you'd like to win, you only can enter one time. So good luck to everyone, and in a few weeks after this video, I'll get I'll actually announce the winner to this Power Play theme deck. And if you want a more detailed description of exactly how to win this deck, read the description in the video description in the underbar. So basically this is a Power Play theme deck. I'll read what the it says on the back and then we'll get into the cards. So this is a Power Play theme deck, like I said. It is water and fighting type. It says, Heavy hitters deliver pure power. It's up to you to control it. Gigalith rumbles into action with red rock, red bullet attack, and the intimidation Pokemon, Crocodile can make other Pokemon polar punches every time it uses its sneaky black eyes ability. Your opponents will be on the ropes, as even little Minchino gets in on the action packing a mighty punch for its mini size. With Pokemon chosen for their fighting fury, can your foes handle your power plays? And what's included in this box are the metallic coin, the checklist, damage counters, deck box, a two-player playmat rule sheet, and one code card. So you get everything that I just read to you if you win this theme deck. So we'll get to the cards, and you can see the card list here. And I'll be going over this in more detail here. Here's the actual package that you'll get. You can't see it too well, but there's the side. We'll open this up. Probably won't show you exactly what the code card looks like. That way, no one will be able to take the code from me. But here's the playing mat. Checklist here. Damage counters. Burn marker and poison marker. Theme deck box. And the reason this is already open is because I arranged all the cards in the theme deck so it would be easier to review. Well, the coin here. There's the coin. And then there's the code card and the regular card. Set the code card here. Set that aside. And then there's a crocodile holographic pattern card. And we'll get into the review here. I'll just go through all the cards in the set and say what I would do and what I think of it by the end. So, start off with the energy cards. There's 12 fighting energy cards in this deck and 6 water energy. And this is always a good way to get extra energy cards or if you're trying to build a theme or a deck on your own and you did need energy cards, it's just a good way to get extra energy cards by buying a theme deck with the type that you like. So here's the fighting energy cards, all 12 of them. And then there should be 6 water energy cards. And we start out with a fighting type Pokemon. We have a 4-3-2 line of Sandile, Krokorok, and Crocodile. So Sandile, basic fighting type Pokemon, 70 HP, only one move, so it's a little slower because it requires two energy cards, but it does have a little higher HP and does do 20 damage, so not bad. Three, three of those, actually four of those, four of those. We have three 
Prokorok. Two moves on here. It's a stage one fighting type, 90 HP, so average that way. Bite does 20 damage for any type of energy. And then Crunch does 40 damage for three energy cards, which is below average. But you can also flip a coin and if heads discard an energy attached to the defending Pokemon. So that makes up for it a little bit. I still think this card's a little weak. But we'll have to see what Crocodile looks like. See if it makes up for it. So three of those. There's two Crocodile. There we go. There's a promo version. 140 HP, stage two. So good HP. Has ability black eyes. And that's what the theme deck package talked about in the back of it. We'll read that second. We'll take a look at Thrash, which does 70 plus damage for three energy cards. So it's definitely better than Croc Rock. It says to flip a coin. If heads, this attack does 20 more damage. If tails, this Pokemon does 20 damage to itself. So it's not too great there. It can do 90 damage possibly or do 20 damage to itself with 140 HP. It's actually not too bad because it should be able to last through a couple turns of actually doing damage to yourself. So there's two of these crocodiles, and the ability is called Black Eyes. It says, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you may flip a coin. If heads, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. That actually works quite well with Crunch. So if you start out with Sandile or Crocorock in the active Pokemon smart spot and then actually evolve and go from basic to stage one to stage two, I would use Crunch on the defending Pokemon. That way you, I guess you have a 50-50 chance when you're using Crunch of discarding an energy card attached to the defending Pokemon. And then you can use Black Eyes every turn and have a 50-50 chance of removing an energy card attached to your active, your opponent's active Pokemon. So if your opponent's using a lot of stage two Pokemon or Pokemon that require a lot of energy cards to attack, both of these cards will be very effective against those and can do a fair amount of damage, especially if you're using Thrash. And that actually is okay since Thrash can do 90 damage, but it does do 20 damage to itself if you flip tails. But if the opponent, if your opponent isn't able to attack because it doesn't have enough energy cards on it, it's actually not that big a deal to have to do 20 damage to Crocodile. So there's two of those. That ends that line. And then we're going to have a 3-2-1 line of Roggenrola, Boldor, and Gigalith. So Roggenrola, basic fighting side Pokemon, 60 HP, so average, two moves. Headbutt, 10, so quite average, and then Reckless Charge does 30 damage, but this Pokemon does 10 damage to itself. If you have its evolutions in your hand, it might not be too bad to actually use Reckless Charge, but I'd probably stay away from it if you don't have the evolutions in your hand, because 60 HP, it could it could get knocked out a little easier if you have to do you know 10 damage to yourself every time. Next is Boldor which is evolution of Roggenrola. 90 HP, so quite average again, just like Krokorok. Has two moves. Headbutt does 30 damage, and then Hard Crash does 60 damage plus, and for three energy cards, and two of them, any type you want. And it says to flip a coin. If heads, this attack does 20 more damage. To, if tails, this Pokemon does 20 damage to itself. So that's not great there. We'll have to take a look at Gigalith to see what that looks like, but Hard Crash, 60 damage, pretty decent. I wish you had wish you had the choice of being able to flip a coin or not, but it's a decent card. There's two of those, and then the one Gigalith, 140 HP, so it's similar to Crocodile in HP. Has two moves, no ability at it this time. Sheer says to discard the top five cards of your deck. If any of these those cards are Fighting Energy cards, attach them to this Pokemon. And you'll need those energy cards with Rock Bullet, which takes four energy cards, any type, so that's nice in a dual type deck. It does 40 damage plus 20 more damage for each fighting energy card attached to this Pokemon. So it could do 20 damage for each of these. Let's say you have four fighting energy cards. That would be 4 times 20, which is 80, plus 40, which would be 120 damage. If you had four fighting energy cards, which would be a great move. You'd be able to knock out pretty much anything in two moves <laughs> I'd say everything in two moves and then almost everything in one move 
that's a great card. I would actually consider taking out probably one of the other fighting type Pokemon, either Throw or Sock, and putting another Gigalith in there just because it's so powerful. Then we have two Throw and two Socks. So Throw a basic 90 HP Pokemon, only has one move, two energy cards it takes, and does 30 damage. Flip a coin. If heads, the defending Pokemon can't attack during your opponent's next turn. So all of these fighting Pokemon I've reviewed so far usually have other things besides doing damage, which I like. Two of those. And then two Sock, which is quite similar. Reminds me of Hitmonlee, Hitmontop, and Hitmonchan. But 90 HP, basic. Just a one move. Five Fierce Chops. Two energy cards. One each of fighting and colorless. That's 20 damage times the number of heads you get when you flip five coins. So it could have the possibility of doing 100 damage, it could have the possibility of doing zero damage. Just a risk you take with these types of cards. So that ends the fire fighting type Pokemon in this deck. We're going to move on to the water type. There's a, not as many water type Pokemon in this deck since there's only six energy cards, six water energy cards, but we have Cub Chew, we have a 2-1 line of Cub Chew and Bear Tick, and then we have a 2-1 line of Ducklet and Swanna. So there's only f four different water type Pokemon in this deck. Cub Chew, basic, 70 HP. Not bad, actually. A little slow, takes two water energy cards, not any colorless, and does 30 damage. So it does a fair amount of damage if you can get the water energy cards on it. And then Bear Tick. It's hard to believe something that looks like that would evolve into Bear Tick. 130 HP, which is extremely high for a stage 1 Pokemon. It has two moves, Icy Wind, which does 30 damage and puts the defending Pokemon to sleep, which is very nice, and Super Power, which does 60 damage for three energy cards, plus it has the ability to do 20 more damage, so it has the ability to do 80 damage total, but then you have to do 20 damage to Bear Tick. Just depending on if you get knocked out, I would take a look at and see... If I do that 20 damage myself, will I get knocked out the next turn, that type of thing. Or if I do 20 more damage, will I knock out the defending Pokemon. So then we have that 2-1 line of Ducklet and Swanna. Ducklet, 60 HP, basic, 2 moves, Roost, heal 40 damage from this Pokemon. Not bad, but it can't retreat during the next turn. And then 20 damage for 2 energy cards, 2 water energy cards with Rain Splash. That's disappointing that it's... Two water energy cards and it's only 20 damage. But definitely, if, if you have to put Ducklet out there, it'd be okay. You can use Roost and it'd heal quite a bit of your damage every turn. And then Swanna, 90 HP, stage 1. Two moves, Wing Dance and Air Slash. Wing Dance does 30 damage. Does 30 damage. Plus, you flip a coin. If heads prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So that makes the 90 HP that it has a little higher if your opponent can't attack every turn. And then Air Slash does 70 damage for 3 energy cards, so it's above average, but you have to discard an energy card attached to this Pokemon. Then we have Basculin, which is other water energy water Pokemon. I said we only had the 4 different, but there's actually 5 different Pokemon water Pokemon in this deck. Basculin, 80 HP basic. Two moves, Flail, which does 10 damage times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon, so it could do 70, dam 70 damage right before it's knocked out. And then final Gambit is a 3 energy card move and does 80 damage. Flip two coins. If both of them are tails, this Pokemon does 80 damage to itself. So basically it's just it's a self-destruct move if you, if you have a 25 pen percent chance of self-destructing with this move if you have to hit two tails in a row. So that's a little risky there, but can do some damage if you have the time to put three energy cards, which is quite a bit. And then we have some colorless Pokemon here. We have a 2-2 line of Mincino and Cinchino. Basic, 60 HP. Last resort does 30 damage. Flip a coin of tails, this attack does nothing. So 50-50 chance you can actually attack or not. And then Chinchino, Cinchino I mean, is stage 1, 90 HP. Two moves, you have Captivate, which takes one, one, one colorless energy card. 
and switch the defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So that's where you could quickly retreat this card out the next turn and put in something like Crocodile or Gigalith and basically knock out any Pokemon you brought in there. So that'd be a good thing to do with Captivate. And then there's Fluffy Tail, which does 30 damage for two colorless energy cards and makes the defending Pokemon asleep. So I know there was another card in this deck that also made the defending Pokemon asleep. It was Beartick's Icy Wind move. So basically there's two Pokemon that can put a defending Pokemon asleep, and then there's two cards that can discard an energy card from the defending Pokemon. So that ends all the Pokemon in this deck. Now we have trainers. We have two of each trainer I'm going to mention here. So we have Energy Search. Just says to search your deck for basic energy card. Reveal it and put it in your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. So these cards are important if you have Pokemon like Gigalith that take four energy cards. You need energy cards. You can just use one of these cards and get an energy card real quick. And you can use as many trainers as you like a turn. So you could use both of them and get two fighting energy cards into your hand. You'll have to wait two turns until you can attach them, but that's a different story. You have two potions. Heal 30 damage from one of your Pokemon. Just keeps your Pokemon alive a little longer. Two full heals. Removes all special conditions from your active Pokemon. So these cards might not be that useful unless you're facing a person that uses a lot of special conditions. Inflicts a lot of special conditions on your own Pokemon. We have two Great Ball, basically lets you look at the top seven cards of your deck and then reveal Pokemon you find there and put it into your hand. So if you have a lot of stage one and stage two Pokemon there, you might be able to get those out quicker. And there's all kinds of noise in the background. I, sorry about that, there's a train going by, there's people riding bikes outside. That's what you get for having the windows open. I'm surprised there haven't been dogs barking yet, but that'll probably happen soon. We have two great balls like I was saying just look at the top seven cards of your deck show one of the Pokemon you see there to your opponent and put it in your hand so that's a way to easily evolve Pokemon and then we have two supporter cards both of them are Bianca so you only can use one supporter card per turn and draw cards until you have six cards in your hand so if you have a lot of trainers in your hand and you use you know two or three trainer cards in a turn you only have a few cards in your hand you can use Bianca and then you can draw cards until you have six cards in your hand. And then the last trainer we have is Pokemon Communication. It says, reveal a Pokemon in your hand and put it on top of your deck. If you do, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. So this is another way to either evolve one of your Pokemon faster, or if you only have Stage 1 and Stage 2 cards in your hand, you might need to find a basic Pokemon in your deck and put it into play. So it's just basically an exchange, or you're just going to the PC and exchanging one Pokemon for another. So basically, there's some heavy hitters in this deck. I really like Gigalith, how it can do, it can possibly do 120 damage if you attach four energy cards, four fighting energy cards to it. It'll just take some time to set up. You can stall with um, Crocodile and Crocorock by discarding energy cards from defending Pokemon so they can't attack. And then you can put Pokemon to asleep, Pokemon asleep that way and, and be able to load up your Pokemon with energy cards by using Beartick's Icy, Icy Wind attack or using Swana's... No, not Swana. Who was it now? One of those Pokemon I saw, it was... Not Swana, was it? No, but Swana, you can use Wing Dance, and that will prevent all effects of attack, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So that basically will make you alive one turn longer. But there should be two Pokemon in this deck that make a Pokemon go asleep, and then one that prevents all damage. So overall, this is a pretty good deck. I definitely recommend it. And before you go, make sure you enter to win this giveaway. There'll be a detailed description of how to win this deck in the underbar below, so you should definitely check that out. And also check out my blog, Facebook, and Twitter links in the underbar below. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.